Hello, all the great teachers out there. We have a lovely day here in China and the spring is here. As the spring has arrived, we have to start planning for next semester. So today we will talk about books. We all have one common goal for our students. My personal goal is to educate them in a way that is interesting, uh, meaningful, diverse, and not too challenging for them. I personally like to show them as many different examples and application of theory that I can find. That's why, at the beginning of my teaching career, I started book hunting in China. There was no problem at home, we had one book and it was fine. But here in China, we have very advanced kids in algebra, especially if we are uh, math teachers, this is important. So it's enough if we just do one or two examples and we can go on. If we want to stimulate all the students from the bottom one to the top achieving one, we have to have a good preparation for the class. And a good preparation requires finding the right examples using the best books. The right book is a very complex term. And of course, it depends on what kind of level of students are we dealing with. I have high expectation for my kids and I'm giving them the full support to achieve my high standards. And I will mention the books that I'm using for pre-calculus and calculus. In this video, we will talk about pre-calculus books. There will be separate video about calculus books. So my top choices are pre-calculus with limits from Larson, Precalculus Mathematics for Calculus, Stuart Radley Watson, Precalculus Graphical Numerical Algebraic, Dimana, and IB Mathematics Higher Level Course Book. In Precalculus, I cover basic geometry. More or less, we cover this just because of the language barrier. After geometry, I start with functions, from linear to inverse trigonometric functions at the end of the year. I will try not to criticize book, but just mention what I like about them and what I do not. First book that I used for pre-calculus was Pre-calculus with Limits from Larson. This book has many, many basic examples to practice, so depends on our audience. If our goal is to cover as many topics as we can, then this book is the right choice. It enables us to go through very quickly. Well, I don't do that. I rather take a few chapters and go into the depth, deepen the theory, involve some proofs and challenge the students. So in school we use pre-calculus, mathematics for calculus from James Stewart. Let me explain one of specific topics uh, that this book is offering. Generally, the theory of polynomials is not difficult to understand. Graphing polynomial functions is quite an easy job, so it's not hard to find these examples in all the books. I like factorization method to find the zeros, so here the second book is more comprehensive. As we see here, these examples do not just require uh, synthetic division, long division, but majority of them can be solved without this, like joining two and two terms together. Here example uh, 40 is a good example of joining two terms, then factorization, and at the end we can also discuss the multiplicity of the zeros in one example. Here in 44, nice factorization as quadratic function. The second what I like here are examples of investigation of end behavior. Some books are referring to end behavior as leading coefficient test. In the class, I prove the fact that the end behavior of a polynomial is determined by its leading term, by factoring the leading term out and then the analysis what happens with other terms. So we first investigate what is happening with the curve far on the right and far on the left. Kids see immediately that function and the leading term look alike if we set the big viewing window. Hence, this book has many useful calculator investigations. The next book I like also because of calculator examples is Precalculus Graphical Numerical Algebraic. Here, I don't like the sequence since all 12 basic functions are done at the beginning. It takes a bit more time to find what we are looking for, but I promise it is worth it. There are many amazing examples and calculator usage. I love example 67. We can give this example for independent work because the steps are completely clear. I have quite some kids with huge language barrier, but they enjoy these examples. I always use this investigative task to determine how we obtain the graph of absolute value of x, since other pre-calculus books don't even include this part of transformations. 
from this book I also like the matching examples. These examples are not so innocent as they look. Students should be much aware of the graph of the logarithm. These sketches that seem like a calculator screen also help students to be more relaxed when dealing with calculator, since nevertheless it is their first year of dealing with graphical calculator. Multiple choice in graphical, numerical, algebraic, it is awesome. Here, for example, after analyzing the graphs at school, kids can simply check their understanding with these simple multiple choice questions. Questions are short, but meaningful for their and our feedback. Here 51 and 52 are justify your answer. So uh, these are perfect for revision at the end of the class or next day. Or like here in 56, we don't mention usually at school that cosecant and cotangent have the same set of asymptotes since these two are just not so strongly related. But it is true and here students have to visualize all six trigonometric functions and it is the purpose and this is exactly the purpose of home revision. And when talking about revision, students don't have problems with reviewing things said at school if they recognize easily what was actually essential at the current uh, new topic. At the end of our school discussion, I always assign this fill in the gap sentences for homework. Since I have Chinese kids, rewriting and using the new vocabulary again at home is the best feedback for them how they are comprehending at school. As they finish, we read these sentences at school, I correct their pronunciation and possibly re-explain if there is a need. And at last, what I miss in both of these books are the examples from the IB book. Since I'm, I'm talking all the time about polynomials, this kind of example I miss in both previous books. Like here, 29, the polynomial leaves a remainder of negative 1 when divided by something and a remainder when divided by something else. And here, uh, what is interesting is that students go immediately by synthetic division or even long division. Perhaps one, student, one top student will recognize the simple usage of remainder theorem. And this is the moment where complexity becomes simplicity and even the top students become impressed by the beauty of math. Here I will include now two answers of my students. When is teaching enjoyable? Hi, I'm Alison. Study is an enjoyable thing. When I see why really complex things can be condensed in one simple matter. Hi, my name is Jason. Studying is becoming enjoyable when I have a chance to get access to the knowledge that I haven't met before. Here, Jason said he enjoys when he learns something new that he has known before. I know there are not many students like him. Therefore, I think it is our job as an educators to equip our kids with as much diversity in our course as much as we can. Consequently, we should use many different books. I hope I helped some of you how to approach or how to improve your pre-calculus class. If you have any opinions or suggestions, I'm happy to hear from you. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. I'm going back to my book, which is a bit different. Wish you a great day. Goodbye.